This is uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. It's Sunday here and uh, almost since I've sort of woken up I've had a, a sort of heavy feeling in my chest. It's a kind of feeling of uh, premonition and um, I mean there's just so many things. So first of all there's, um, there's what's happening in the Arctic. It's extreme weather conditions. Um, so have a look at this. And then uh, the wildfires are um, starting in um, in Australia in a big way, and you've got high temperatures in in Sydney and elsewhere. And we've got this World Heritage <coughs> Park. In Queensland, which is which is burning. And then we've got um, all the shenanigans in the United States around the election, Trump, etc. And then we've got um, protests and uprisings just about everywhere you can see. So uh, in London, and then you've got this uh, from France. <laughs> I want to deal with something <laughs> a little bit lighter than that. Um, I just started watching uh, as a long uh, video. Um, I didn't get right through it. Um, it had some interesting things in it. But one of the most interesting things uh, was I found reference to something I'd never, ever heard of before. Um, it's, um, it's something called Kenzak. Have you heard of it? I hadn't. Anyway, just have a, a brief listen to this. Imagine what would happen if four very wealthy nations were to form a new union of their own. A union that would act in a similar way with unified global plans for their militaries, economies, politics, trade, and even citizenship. That's why right now we could be seeing the creation of a new global force right before our very eyes. But now there is a new union being proposed by some of the top political leaders in the countries of Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. They're proposing a new union called Kanzer. Well, the idea is to form a union that would increase trade, foreign policy cooperation, military cooperation, and mobility of citizens between these nations. Essentially, on a global scale, these four countries would try to act more as one bigger nation versus four smaller ones. So the ramifications of this could be massive. Out of these four countries, the UK has the largest economy and the sixth largest economy in the world. Canada is next, having the 10th largest economy in the world. Australia is close behind with the 14th largest economy, and New Zealand is a distant 51st in terms of size of its economy, largely due to its small population. Now, when you take into account the size of these economies, along with general economic and political influence, then this new proposed union would likely become the second most powerful union in the world behind the EU. And this would also make it the fourth largest economic engine in the world just behind China. Now, this union would also have the fifth strongest military force in the world, and it would control the largest amount of land and resources on Earth as well. So undoubtedly, if this union were to happen, then we would immediately see a new superpower take its place on the global stage. So, uh, even though I've never heard of this, it seems to uh, have a lot of support according to this. Now, so far there has been overwhelming public support in each one of these countries as the UK polls show 68% in favor of Kanzuk, Australia shows 73% support, Canada is at 76%, and New Zealand is at... So I found various uh, headlines and articles about this. And some of them even uh, reference uh, Jacinda Ardern, even though I think that most of the support for this new alliance comes from the right, from the ACT parties and people in the National 
party. However, when I looked, I tried various searches, Kansas plus New Zealand, etc. There's been absolutely no discussion that I can find on the search engines, on the media, about this in this country. Uh, it seems to be completely um, under the radar. Uh, I can't. I can't see anything. So there seems to be quite a lot of stuff. It's mostly out of Britain, as far as I can see, and it um, is kind of advocating this uh, as an alliance, as part of uh, the process of Brexit, and looking for new partners, and also perhaps as a as a way uh, to move uh, away from uh, China. So, so. Here go a couple of the uh, the items off off a couple of the uh, websites promoting this. However, uh, there's another side of this. Uh, it's not just the uh, the brotherhood of all the all the uh, white ex-colonial uh, Commonwealth uh, nations. Uh, you know they na make natural partners. Uh, there's also uh, some other reasons uh, why they would want to be in um, in this, and it all relates to um, I suppose to the new world order to uh, the Great Reset, to all of that. So the side uh, that's not being told uh, by all these kind of articles and glossy websites is something that we need to be reminded of because I haven't seen anyone reference this for about three or four years. Uh, and that all revolves around the, um, the, uh, the five eyes. So let's just uh, have a reminder uh, of all of this. Have you ever heard the phrase, the Five Eyes Countries? Listen up. It is important for your online privacy. The Five Eyes is an intelligence alliance between the U.S., the U.K., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. They believe that privacy is not absolute and that tech companies must give law enforcement access to user communications, even the encrypted ones. What does it mean for you? According to leaked documents, the Five Eyes countries spy on each other's citizens, and then they swap the collected information. Such arrangement is necessary because these countries can't actually spy on their own citizens. That is prohibited by their laws. This is why when choosing a VPN service, check its country of jurisdiction. In the Five Eyes countries, user data, even if encrypted, may still be monitored, stored, and shared without your consent. The same applies to the so-called Fourteen Eyes countries, which also include Denmark, France, the Netherlands, Norway, Germany, Belgium, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. To keep your privacy online, it is recommended to choose a VPN service that is located outside of these countries. Using NordVPN, I found um, this next piece. I found um, a New Zealand produced movie uh, called I Spy with My Five Eyes. And I've just taken a few extracts um, that uh, feature. Um, the uh, NSA whistleblower Bill Binney and uh, New Zealand researcher Nikki Haga. So just have a quick listen. Once you adopt these totalitarian procedures, I mean, this is straight out of the KGB, Stasi, Gestapo, SS, you know, Mao's people, everybody. All the dictator and despots down through history do this kind of thing. And so once you adopt that, then you have to 
then you have to do in secret, pass laws or change things and, and suppress your population and, and keep them from knowing what you're doing. And so you have an uninformed public. And so you've destroyed your democracy. That's what's happening. And there's bad guys in there doing things. So this is our new target. In order to keep up with it, we have to have an ever increasing budget. We need more and more people. That's how you build an empire. While funding to the Five Eyes Alliance has dramatically increased since the beginning of the 21st century, the agencies continue to remain largely autonomous from the governments who fund them. Governments come and go. They're told the minimum. In a way, they're kind of scared of the spies. And so these agencies are mostly ships that run themselves. I think it's an inevitable tension in all countries with major intelligence agencies. Most of what goes on doesn't seem to be known. And that builds up a culture where the agencies start to believe that that's their right. They see political accountability as a risk. And so while you can't say that they completely run themselves as a rogue or something and practice a lot of what they do is completely separate from the governments that they're under. There was a distinct change after September 11. Something, something changed which, at least in the smaller agencies, had been a, a no-go zone, which was that was using these Cold War, massive national security resources against the citizens of, of the Five Eyes countries. That had been something that just never usually happened in a country like New Zealand or Australia or Canada. Um, and September 11 loosened that. The United States and Britain completely dropped all their sense of restraint about it. And these agencies are closer to each other than they are to their own government. The Five Eyes Alliance is now capable of capturing virtually every phone conversation, email, internet search or social media entry in the world. In conclusion, uh, I am left wondering what this means politically and geopolitically. Um, so if, uh, if Biden uh, kind of is inaugurated on the 20th of January, then I think that we're back to business as usual, empire as usual, and um, uh, apart from perhaps, uh, you know, violence and civil war in America, there's nothing to really to worry about. So uh, yet on the other hand, if uh, Trump prevails, and he manages to overturn this, uh, what I regard, well, if not a fake, fake uh, election, then I think all bets are off. And I ask myself, might this alliance um, go from the sort of back burner to uh, a matter of urgency? Um, and that's a sort of po past the popcorn moment. We'll just have to wait and see. This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. <laughs>